Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to, I guess, we're the first cohort going through this, so pretty excited. Um, we have uh, a great book here. I did actually end up um, ordering, I haven't received it yet, the paper copy of this because I feel myself really wanting to uh, dive in and highlight and everything in here. Um, today's session really is about kind of getting to know each other, what we're looking to get out of this book and this book club, and then kind of talking about the plans moving forward and the resources that uh, many of us are either currently active or have been active in the book hubs, so it's good to know all the different resources here. Um, so I think before we dive too much into the effect uh, book itself, we'll go ahead and uh, just do some introductions. Uh, figured a little bit about you, um, if you for to share you know, in school or jobs, as well as um, any interesting projects you might be working on, your motivation for this course and what you're hoping or this book club uh, and what you're hoping to get out of it. And then I will do a little bit of a, an icebreaker. Um, so once you go, um, you're going to call on somebody else. And when they get to the icebreaker, you're going to give them the question. So uh, pay attention a little bit there. So um, my name is John Ellis. I am a data scientist, spent about 10 years working in transportation. I've um, also, I'm an adjunct professor and uh, work on the education side. Also, going to be starting up a master's in computer engineering this this fall. Um, my motivation for this course is I'm actually doing some outside um, research projects that I realize I've never actually done this type of research before. So this is a great way to apply um, the methodology here and make sure that I set up the the research and get the um, right data for what I'm looking for. And ultimate goal is to um, build out intelligence systems to help with ed tech or disability resources. Um, so that, that's kind of my motivation for this. And I'll wait till the last person goes to answer my icebreaker with that question. But I'll go ahead and start with uh, with Aaron. Um, we are in the same book club, uh, PDL, that meets later today, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Is the uh, icebreaker coming at the end, or am I supposed uh, I'll, to? I'll ask you a question. So when you call, okay. on, you'll ask the answer the question for the icebreaker. And if someone wants to ask me first, so I, I don't put you on the spot. But um, I realize that didn't work out as planned. But we'll go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, oh, okay. So, uh, you, so, so in, sorry. Introductions, and then uh, before you call on somebody else, I'll ask you an icebreaker question. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And then whoever's okay. back will ask me the icebreaker question. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, Aaron Grasco here. Uh, I'm an actuary. Um, so, uh, you know, fairly deep into data science. Um, I'm uh, a daily R user, although I do use Python as well. I, I do like that this book is, you know, has has a combination of, of code examples in both R and Python. Uh, I have used a couple techniques that we'll be talking about in this book, propensity score matching, covariate matching for, for benchmarking type analyses, trying to see if there are, you know, significant differences between populations and, uh, you know, like propensity score matching is, is kind of a, a tool that's pretty helpful um, in doing that. I've used interrupted time series to figure out if a change in a, an insurance plan design actually influenced, um, you know, insured's behavior. So... This stuff's really, really interesting to me and um, haven't really gone uh, as deep as I'd like, um, hoping to go uh, go deeper with this book. Um, I know on the Slack channel, I, I had recommended this book. I think others had as well. Uh, as a, um, and so I'm glad we're, we're looking at it now. There's another book out there as well that I haven't really um, previewed too much, but it, Causal Inference, the, the mixtape, seems to be another good one that I'm hoping to supplement uh, as we read through through this book. Awesome. So we're all making a fruit salad. And if you had to pick yourself as being a fruit in that fruit salad, what would you be and why? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go with blueberries because I had blueberries this morning. Um, they are sweet, but not overly sweet. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. We'll just leave it simple like that. I like I like your ideas there. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and feel free to uh, select the next person. Yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna select Ashley since she's 
next to John on my my screen. Sounds Hi, good. Ashley. Hi, <laughs> uh, I am Ashley Reynolds. I am an evolutionary ecologist, um, currently a postdoctoral fellow at the Canadian Museum of Nature and University of Ottawa, which, as you can guess, is in Ottawa, <laughs> uh, so the capital of Canada. Um, and while I theoretically understand research design because I, I, you know, went to grad school and all of that stuff, um, I feel like I've never, I've never been formally taught it. It's just kind of one of those things that you just like sort of learn through experience and, and talking with colleagues and things like that. Um, and I've never never looked at it from the causal inference sort of angle. So I was interested in sort of um, learning more from that end of things. And I think a lot of the stuff in the like toolbox section will be really interesting because it'll sort of teach me more about the theory and the um, the actual reasons why some of the tools I use work um, without, without as much scary math. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, checking it out. And, and I assume I answer the same fruit salad question. No, you, you're up to the fate of whatever Aaron asks you for the icebreaker question. Just okay. <laughs> it's like yeah. My, my I'm gonna mix that. totally mix it up because you probably already prepared your answer for the fruit salad. <laughs> it's uh, just blueberry. Just you know, any question he sends you, just say blueberry. So uh, I guess my question would be, what is the first uh, concert you ever attended? Um, all right. So technically, I went to a U2 concert when I was still in the womb. Um, <laughs> but as, as a, a functioning human being who has memories of said concert, the first concert was the Backstreet Boys. Very nice. They're still around, aren't they? Like in some format? Yeah. Yeah. I think they like took a break for a while, but they had like a comeback like two, three years ago, something like that. I think they released mm. like a new album and everything. Awesome. Thank uh, you. So Sarah will go next. I guess so. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm based in Germany and uh, I'm doing my, or I started my PhD in economics like about a year ago, um, and econ people are all about causal inference. If it's not causal, they're not really interested. So, like, technically, I've seen some of the stuff before, but I figure it'd be nice to, like, go through it and take a bit more time. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited about that. Awesome. And Ashley, question for Sarah? Okay. No pressure. No pressure. Hello. Okay, what does your perfect burger or sandwich, any form of sandwich, have on it? That's tough. Okay, so we have this burger place in our city and they sell mac and cheese burgers. So like the patty is made out of mac and cheese. And then they put cheese on top of it. And it's like, it's it sounds really weird, but it is amazing. Nice. That sounds very delightful. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm on East Coast time here, so it's a little early for lunch, but it's it's getting there. So uh, where uh, are you? Is it near dinner time for you there, Sarah? Or? It's like 4 p.m. So I don't know that weird zone in between where you're like snacky, but don't really want to eat yet. Awesome. And then you get to ask me a, uh, a question and then we'll uh, go ahead and start talking about some of the housekeeping for this. Um. So if you're on vacation, mountains or beach? Mountains. I, uh, I, I grew up near the beach, so kind of been always around it. And I like the mountains because it's, you just get a chance to escape and get away and I also like it as a form of exercise because it's not like you can just get stop immediately quit and like hop off a treadmill. It's actually like you have to climb back down or climb back up. But 
um, living in New Hampshire really introduced me to a lot of like uh, mountain, uh, mountains and got to hike a lot of the uh, uh, 4,000 footers there and, um, and so on. So it's kind of where I'm looking at there. Sweet. So I've been, it sounds like we're all fairly relatively new to both the book club as well as um, this topic. We're hoping to apply it. Um, just a quick question, because I saw somebody else join just now. Thank you. Hello. Uh, we were just uh, wrapping up on introductions. Uh, if you'd like to come off mute and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your motivation for the course, what you're hoping to get out of it. And um, well, I guess we'll have to ask you a, 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 a an icebreaker question as well. Yeah. Um, hi, I am. I am Abdul. I'm sorry. For my background is a bit uh, not clear. That's why my camera is off. I um from from the Gambia. I mostly work in economics, uh, in development economics. Yeah, and I have participated in a couple of book clubs. I'm currently also uh, uh, reading this book, uh, Python for Data Analysis. And yeah, I I look forward to interacting and you know sharing thoughts. I've, I've done some of this stuff, but I think it, it will be a good refresher. And also the, the application part of it makes the book interesting for me. The fact that um, he will give you the, the technique and then go to do some applications and possibly discuss some 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 papers that use the technique. Just, uh, yeah, so and, and I the, the first part of the book, I found it interesting as well. So yeah, and I hope to use some of these things in my my research. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I'm not sure at what point you joined in, but uh, Sarah is uh, a PhD in economics as well. And Ashley is a PhD in ecology. Is that am I remember correctly? Okay. And Aaron is actuary, and he's been in a variety. Are you in the same book club as that too? The Python. Yeah, and just uh, just uh, I I might be joining a bit late. We can hear. By two, we have a, a communal group a prayer service by two, but it takes like 10 minutes. So that's that's why I will be joining late. So, yeah, no worries. And um, as we progress, so, through the, then we can um, you know, keep that in mind so that we can try to keep it so you're not joining in halfway through the discussion or anything. But awesome. And yeah. we're wrapping up the introductions by just um, answering uh, some silly icebreaker questions. Anyone have? Any creative questions or one they wish they had asked so that they can ask a do? All right, I'm going to recycle one of the ones because that was kind of interesting. Uh, Ashley's was it um, burger or sandwich? What what's the what's on it? Is that what's on it or is that a, what type of sandwich and why? Either way, like you get to build the perfect sandwich, what's in it? There we go. And that's for you, Abdu, if you feel like answering that one. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll go with uh, fried eggs. Fried eggs? Yeah. <laughs> a little runny or co cooked all the way through? You know, just uh, just a little run. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, I mentioned that uh, I'm I'm facilitating this. It's my first time facilitating. I'm doing to help with my communication and everything. So if there's anything that's uh, not clear or you want to add or feel free to stop uh, me uh, so that you can get the most out of this, let, let me know. But it sounds like 4 p.m. on the one side and we're over to probably 9 a.m. on the other side. So... Um, we've got a wide range of, of time frames here, but um, some of the expectations on here, uh, obviously that you're here because you want to get something out of this. And part of that is um, contributing, uh, helping others with resources, and also making sure that our time spent together is most effective with an A, not an E. Um, no, E, effective. Okay. Um, and um, the, the author made a similar joke, by the way. Yeah, I just watched the first video. Is that why you did that? <laughs> yeah, that's why I said that. I I I was uh, coming in that I realized 
I missed the whole additional materials section up here. Um, yeah, I just well, saw that this morning myself. Yeah, and he's he has uh, some videos and uh, with and without sound. And what's interesting is he's very animated, very passionate about this. Um, but there's a ton of resources that if you were like me, missed it, um, uh, we'll go through those. But um, as a reminder, this is just a this isn't my actual Slack channel. Um, we have a link up top in this one, the book, shared slides. And then if you, there's a chapter or you want to volunteer for a chapter that is an interest of you, um, there's a link here. And what those look like is this is the book. Um, it's all open source, as I said. So you're welcome to purchase a, a paper copy, but we'll be working out of um, this, the effect book.net. Um, we also have these slides, which so far, my experience with uh, the book clubs is these haven't been updated um, or really followed. If this is something that is helpful for you all, um, it's fairly straightforward in the um, GitHub repository for ours to um, add to them. So um, I was thinking that either we can prepare into the chapter with the slides and information or meet and talk about the key takeaways and then whoever's presenting that day update this so that this will be um, a useful tool moving forward. Um, and the we can go through the instruction on that. But again, I want to set this up so it's not busy work, but it's also something that, you know, if this is a resource or helpful for you, um, we definitely want to take advantage of that. Because right now, um, this is our, um, our notes and everything. If you are interested in signing up for one, you just put your name here. These are the different chapters. It's one chapter per week. So far, um, the on the first half of it, at least, it seems like they're fairly short, which opens up a lot of time for us to add to this or supplement it. So moving into today is more of an introduction. We could talk about the first chapter, um, but moving forward, likely going to need to fill up some additional space there. So I don't know if you want to like kind of start the discussion for the prior next week and then continue in depth, but we'll see we are where we are when we get that. So our GitHub for this one is R4DS book club dash effect. And as you can see, I haven't put, uh, put a PR in here yet, but um, there's really straightforward ways to connect this to your um, GitHub account. Is, is, how's everyone's experience with R and GitHub? Is it thumbs up, sideways, down? Okay, um, but yeah, pretty much this is, these steps are fairly straightforward. You open up our studio and, or R and just put these in um, to actually, and what it does is it uh, creates a R project on your, um, your system. Mine's on my desktop uh, and you can see up here and then you can add repositories to it, which would be, oh, sorry, um, branches to it so that you can, um, contribute and then push and that once it's approved, which I believe it would go to John, it would update on that, um, the book here. So that's what I did here. I haven't pushed this one, but I have a, uh, um, a branch, uh, for the first chapter that when I'm done, I can PR it. And all those instructions are here, um, supposed to be made forward. Now, in the effect, before we get into the introduction, in the additional materials section, there's a lot of great information here. Um, these video series, um, there's one with and without sound. This one looks like it's the with sound. And you can see they're about 10 minute videos or so talking about various different topics. So these might be ones that uh, would be helpful as you go through each of them. They're on the site at, uh, or on YouTube, but it might be easier just to recognize them here. There's also homework assignments and a package that you can download. Now, when I went to go download this package uh, for R, which has the code in it, I couldn't um, just do the import packages. I actually had to, uh, sorry, I had to go into here and run this one because it said my uh, wasn't compatible with my R. So if you run into that error, um, you might be able to do this here. Now, I'm familiar with Python. I'm not sure how everyone else is, but if you want to do this through Python or Stata, the course is designed to set up for that. Um, just, I guess what I said. Anyone thinking about completing this in Python slash Stata, or are we all going to do R 
Is there a preference? Yeah, I I, I would like Tri State as well. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll stick with R. I don't. I I personally have not used Stata. Has anyone else here used Stata? That would. Okay. So maybe I think the uh, problem with that is it's it's a uh, right it's a commercial license and I don't I don't have that whereas Python and R are open source and free. Okay. Yeah. So if if I do you're interested in it, it is set up for it. When you if you decide to volunteer something, you're welcome to share it. Um, uh, but if possible, you could also show show it in R as well. That would be helpful for the rest of us. But um, definitely great great exp uh, exposure to it if, for practice. Um, Awesome. And then these are the homework assignments. And they're mostly um, starting chapter five forward, I guess actually chapter three. Um, as as he mentioned early on is that this book is split in half. The first half is more conceptual, not much math or in depth. Um, the second half is a toolbox. So the first half is gonna be more of a discussion based, hopefully opening up discussion questions and so on. With uh, with you all. Um, and then again, this is the package for the data sets that are used uh, throughout. So you can do this. I, I did add it to our repository for the book. Um, and then this is additional code and example data for the effect. It's called Casual Book, but if you are looking for specific ones, then you can download these ones directly. Oh, apparently there's an applied economics course here. I'm not sure if you all got a chance to look at that one, but that might be helpful as well as casually, but um, awesome. Any questions on the uh, additional material um, before we get kind of more into the introduction? Anybody try downloading these or interact with them yet? Any problems or, okay. I haven't tried yet. Yeah, so I, I haven't heard the one with the music, so I'm assuming since it was requested without background music, it might be a little over the top, but the one I watched last night, which was the first one, was, I think it was like seven or eight minutes, and um, usually I watch videos on like two times speed or one and a half times speed, but he speaks pretty quickly, so I'm, I'm probably recommend uh, watching it on one time speed. Uh, very animated, very passionate through there. Yeah, I, I watched uh, the one with the uh, music, but it was also around, around the same time. It was short. And I, I also downloaded some of the, 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 the additional materials and they were quite uh, useful. Awesome. I don't know if there is a way to pin the, the, the link to the videos and some of the additional materials in the, the Slack channel. So oh, that will be quite handy. Yeah, that, that's actually a great segue into the next part is, you know, we have some flexibility to get set this up the way that works best for us. Um, uh, open up for discussion. But one thing I was thinking is that maybe for each week we have some sort of like uh, thread inside the Slack channel, like cohort one, chapter one thread or something, and we could post things in there if need be, um, if that would be helpful, or if the book or setting up the slides would be helpful. But um, since many of you are looking to apply this and also towards towards learning for application almost immediately. What would be the best setup? How how best would you like to see the time spent in here and the slides or what's presented during the the, the, the actual time together versus in between the classes? Um, any thoughts on that? Um, you know, definitely up to suggestions or thoughts, what's worked well for the past or what you'd like to see. Would, would you all find benefit in completing and setting up the slides in here, or would you prefer to have the ability to present in your own system? And I, I'm personally okay with the uh, book down format. I think, I think it works well for, for this particular book. I, I know, John, we're in this other book club, we write practical deep learning for coders, and that's a Python-based course, so it's a little funky using our book down for a Python course, but I think here... As long as folks are comfortable with kind of that R markdown format, I, I, I'd say let's just kind of roll with that. 
Yeah, and it's it's fairly straightforward. It says, you know, when you download it, it's pre-populated with some stuff. Um, if you want to set another slide, you just add the double hashtag like this, and that allows you to have multiple slides here. Obviously, I didn't fully go through it, but um, now when we fill out these slides as an audience, what would be helpful on these? Uh, obviously, I mentioned not regurgitating, you know, the entire book here. Um, I, I copy some kind of some quotes that I was found some highlights here, but um, when you, if you were to come back to this in six months, what would be helpful to see in here or what would you like to have this resource show as for you? And we don't have to answer these today, just um, kind of just some thoughts on there. Um, we'll have the videos uh, recorded and they usually send a link out on those, but um, what my plan is for next week, um, and we can start talking about chapter one this week, but it is a fairly short one. We could actually complete chapter one, but to figure out what we do next week, but um, is to introduce or present the slides, make it dynamic. If we need to add thoughts or anything to this, we can do that. And then actually publish the slides after the meeting of the, of the submission. So um, if you do want to present in PowerPoint or something like that, that's fine. And then we can transfer it in here. Um, I would say it would be cool if this was like a um, you know, collaborative one, kind of like a Google Docs where we could all be in there. But uh, I think it would be best if, if we each have a uh, our own um, whoever is presenting has a branch for that chapter. And then during the call, we can add to it. Um, you could always try to connect to that branch and make changes, but I think the presenter will have control over what they want for that day. Um, so each week as we go through, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's not much on there. So let me go back to this one. Um, there are the learning objectives, which are set up for us to get something out of each of those for that one. So these might be ones that as we go through, we might want to have set prior to meetings so that we all on our own kind of make sure we're able to answer those questions. Um, and then I I know a lot of you all mentioned the actual toolbox and kind of get our hands dirty in there. Is there a requirement from your all's knowledge for us to stick to this schedule? Could we continue? Could we potentially do like one part of the book with a, uh, another part or uh, I'm just trying to think of the, you know, we don't want to wait what uh, four months before we can actually start getting into some of the fun stuff in here. I, yeah. Just in, in previewing this book, I, I do think those first few chapters are, are really basic groundwork. So I, I guess the decision point is, do we want to combine some of these together right and and like maybe do two chapters at a time or, or three or whatever and then slow down once we get into the meat of it, it it's a little little hard for me to answer right now because I, I haven't done a thorough review but I, I i don't know what other others are thinking here but that that i think that would make sense for me is is we can maybe go go faster through the introductory material and then once we get to things you know like identification causal diagrams maybe we start slowing down there it's, it's really I think it's the first four chapters, to be honest with you, <laughs> that are the real basic stuff. Okay. So it looks like I do have the ability to update the dates on here. So if I combine chapters one and two together for next week and three and four for the following week, does that work for everybody that shaves some time off? Um, now going through these, we go back to one, or I guess we can see where we are at that point. Um, let me just mess with this. I'll, I'll update this, but... Um, I'll take next week if that if you all are okay listening to my voice for another week, but um, feel free to come in here. Um, if you're interested in, in presenting three and four, you'll be doing both of these and then looking forward as you spend uh, the rest. And then obviously we do have some flexibility. We're not going to be meeting on this date and there's probably Thanksgiving somewhere in here as well. But if there's any holidays or times that or outside the US, I just not familiar with, just let us know we can adjust the dates as well or choose not to skip a day or so on. But right now there's only a few of us. So um, hopefully we get a good kind of roundabout, but again, no, no pressure, it's not required, um, but part of learning is obviously by, you know, contributing as well and stuff. So um, I'll make that adjustment here and 
stuff on that. And then as we go through it and get more familiar with the book and everything and the resources, we'll probably have a better way to address this. So I'll bring this up next class. Uh, sorry, I, he said, this is my first week in three years that I have not taught evening classes. So it's like, I'm still in that like uh, one. So um, next session, uh, we'll get through that more. But, uh, but yeah, so any questions or any thoughts from anybody through the introduction so far, um, if you go through, it's pretty much short where he basically says, hey, this book is really fun and it's benefit. And hey, I know everybody says their book is fun and different and the best thing ever, but it is designed, set up to, um, you know, introduce the topics, go through it more on the, um, you know, the, the thought of it and understanding the why problem. And then the second half are the toolbox to help go through it. Um, and with the different sources, we can start to apply it. Now, there are the homeworks that are starting in chapter three, so we can consider maybe incorporating that, but for one and two, um, they're fairly short. I had planned to talk a little bit about this today if we wanted to, um, but yeah, so I'll open up for a little bit for just some general discussion on the introduction or anything, and then from here we'll um, talk about well, we, if we want to use up the rest of the time for something or if we want to call it early and then um, kind of assign some homework or pre-work for next week so that we can uh, dive right into these topics. And again, want to make sure that this is helpful for you for you all um, and it's applicable. And, you know, unless there's a reason why we have to do one before the other, if there's a project or something that has a more immediate need, we should be able to have some flexibility to you know, swap some of these out as well. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think what your earlier point about uh, doubling up on the chapters, again, makes sense. And I think as we kind of progress through this, we, we can uh, make the, the decision, you know, hey, this chapter was really short, so let's just cover two the, the following meeting. Because uh, I'm just scrolling through, you know, even like chapters five and six now, and they look really short. Whereas when you get to, 14, which is matching, that's a bit longer. And, you know, you, you wouldn't want to double up, I would say, with that sort of chapter. Plus, that's getting to the core of what the book is about. Which actually um, brings up a good point that is, if we are able to double up in the first half of the book, we could actually split these longer chapters into two weeks so we're not rushing through if need be or if we need to revisit something. So I think knowing that we have the flexibility as we see what fits best for us and our schedules and everything, we'll have a better idea of, um, but yeah. You know, we, we've run into this problem with advanced R and that book club where some chapters are pretty short, but others are extremely long and, you know, you only have an hour worth of time. And so <laughs> I guess that's, that's kind of the judge, right? It's like, is this so short that I could describe everything in 15 minutes or, or not? And, um, of course, we all have varying schedules, right? So I'm thinking, you know, if there's a week where it's like you you have the time to do two because it was fairly short, let's do that. But if you had a really busy week and you could only get through the one chapter, I think that's okay too. Yeah, because this is a lot um, to go through. Now, when we focus through the chapters, is everyone interested or are people interested in the kind of the mathematical, like, you know, the meat of it or more of the application on the coding side or a mix just to kind of help gauge like um like do you want to see formulas and things um out or is it going to be more of the higher level and how to work through the code and work through code examples would that be more beneficial during that time i i For personally me, like the, oh, the practical application but but sarah yeah feel feel free to jump in one thing I like about this book, though, is it doesn't appear to be super technical. <laughs> no, yeah, he mentions that early on. That it's not like a you know you have to have a math degree to understand it or anything like that. Right, and 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 if just to compare this one to the causal, uh, what is it, the mixtape uh, book that's also open source? This one seems to be a little bit more practical, like high, higher level than that book. Even go go ahead, Sarah. Though I cut you off. Sorry, um, for me it'd be really important to like at least get the intuition. I don't need all of the super long formulas because they scare me. Um, but like just at least getting the intuition and knowing, oh, this would be an assumption that we would have to take care of. Like 
that kind of stuff would be important and not just like just doing the code. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so that is all helpful for designing for next week. So if, as you mentioned, like the first chapter pretty much can be summarized with like four extracts of quotes. Um, so it's like, we don't need necessarily need to spend a full hour, but I'll, I can add to this or we can um, further, but basically, you know, it talks about causal research, but um, you know, these are just kind of like handwritten notes. Um, you know, if we want to add anything else, uh, links or anything, we can definitely put those in here. But um, I think that's a good plan moving forward is we'll do the, um, we'll double up for a bit so that I'll do one and two. Is there anyone that's interested in picking up the three and four two weeks out, just so I know planning wise? I can do it. Okay. So once I get that schedule set up, um, I guess if you just want to put your name next to three, I'll know anyways, but it will be two weeks out. So not the 24th but the 31st we'll do, we'll aim for three and four. And if for some reason we're moving too fast or moving too slow, we can always adjust those as well. Um, again, this is for all of us learning. And um, I probably should put the little bit of the notice of our code of conduct, which is basically being um, respectful to each other. You know, we're all here to learn. We're at different levels of at least our education and our career paths, but it sounds like we're all fairly on the same page about where we are with the actual content of this. Um, but again, there's a code of conduct, you know, being um, yeah, um, being respectful, it's an open learning and definitely reaching out to questions. But um, I guess with that, what I will do is I'll update this introduction slide um, with actually the links to our information, because there's, if, if you click on like this, some of these, the links are pointed to the wrong one, but maybe it's, oh, it's okay. I guess I was clicking on something else, but I think it's the, the readme that is not updated. So I'll need to update the readme, but again, these are just the standards pledge. And again, um, you know, if so, something seems to be a problem, it, it, it could be very well that we're just unaware of it. So if something is bothering you or if there's a holiday or something that would conflict with the time, we can, you know, look at, you know, letting us know and, you know, we're all here to learn and not step on anyone's toes. But as mentioned earlier, the, that beginning of the time, maybe we can spend those first 10 minutes just recapping from the previous week so that we're not, um, you know, holding up anyone that needs to join later or anything like that. But um, this is a fluid one. We'll go through it and we're really excited about it. Um, as far as the communication outside of during this um, one, what, what would, you, would you all just like to post just in the general Slack channel for the book? Would you like to have a separate um, like thread in there or kind of see what happens when you actually need to or checking in or anything like that? I'm personally okay with just the the, the regular uh, channel that's already out there for now. And you know, if we need others, let's let's do that. We can decide later. But but yeah, that that would be my preference. But I'll let others chime in as well. Cool. So we'll keep this keep this simple and straightforward, and um, open there. But for next week when we come in, um, if you all can at least get the. Uh, repository for the book club, which is this one uh, on your system in R. Again, if you have problems or it's like setting up Git, GitHub, it's here. Um, the only error that I saw was that I didn't have the book down package initially when I said this, and I got a little warning saying book down wasn't included, so I just had to import packages book down afterwards. Um, but other than that, it, all I just went through all these instructions and straightforward. I, I use Python, so it's kind of like I had to wait a little bit for R to pop up online. Um, and then if you can also connect to the uh, book resources. So this is, um, sorry, the um, YouTube channels. Uh, if you want to look through a couple of these topics, uh, again, feel free to jump ahead as you need fit. If you see something of interest that might be benefit to bring in that might not be the actual chapter we're covering in, but still something worth noting, 
you know, definitely we'll have to make sure we save some time for those kind of contributions as well. Um, but again, all of all of those resources are either for the book specifically. Took me a little bit to get to last time. Is additional materials up here? Um, a video series went over homework assignments. We'll we'll start to take a look through um, with module three, uh, looking through them. Um, you know, summer code. I believe this one is. There were documents on this one. Um, there so, is one for chapter two. Up oh, there as well. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, uh, sorry, where did you say you saw that one? Uh, okay. it's before, yeah. Okay, so I'll um, yeah. If you want to take a look through that one as well, sorry, I uh, completely missed that one. So there probably is a chapter one. I just can't see it. But... No, I don't think there is chapter one. I think it starts at two. All right, so yeah, good, good catch on that. So that would be a good place to start uh, looking through too, is that we're documented to see um, if you can answer those questions um, and we'll uh, go from there. So uh, high level, I'll update the um, effect. Again, if you have a topic that interests you, the dates may change, um, but you know, you put your name there and you know, we can always, get to, we'll probably try to aim for like maybe always being like three or four weeks out ahead so that we have those covered. And if something comes up, we have some time to maybe let someone else prepare or something like that. So as you're looking through this, if you all have any interest in maybe the first eight ones, if there's, if we do group these together, um, you know, definitely put your name there and you can go from there, but um, I'll update this. Um, I'll update the, any, Thing from the introduction slides. Uh, if you can't make it for some reason, uh, perfectly fine. The uh, recording will be nice. <laughs> I thought I was saying something wrong or I was on mute. A lot of times I'm on mute and I'm talking for like 20 minutes before someone's like, hey, you're on mute. And I'm like, great, thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know, supposed to have fun with this, enjoy it. And obviously it's serious topics and everything. But um, for me, I'm, I'm gonna be applying this for a personal project that's outside of anything else. Um, so that's kind of my more immediate motivation is really planning this out and maybe applying for grants and so on. Uh, so this would be very helpful. But anyone have anything else they want to share or uh, add or what they would like to see for next week outside of um, kind of just the slides and the um, kind of the updated information from for that those chapter one and chapter two. Um, just, just as a heads up, there's a good chance that I probably won't be at the meeting on the 31st of July. I don't have my travel plans booked yet, but I'll be at a conference, uh, in Montreal. So I'll potentially be on a train coming back, um, at that time, okay. or it might be before the train. So in which case I'll be here, but I'll keep, I'll keep you guys updated. And if there is a date that you're not going to be available, but you've prepared for that, if there's questions or anything you want us to make sure to cover during like the the recording, you can feel free to send them in the Slack and we can make sure to include those as well. Or if you have questions after reviewing the stuff, that's helpful too. But um, yeah, that that that's appreciate you all letting us know. So um, right now there's only a few of us. So um, yeah, we're probably going to, have multiple opportunities to go through here. Um, but again, if even if the dates, the dates will change, but if there's a topic that you definitely want to make sure that you can want to facilitate or really interesting for you, definitely put your name down there. And if the date doesn't work, we can, you know, if it's far enough out, we can make some adjustments there. Uh, but yeah, any other thoughts, questions, um, we can hang out and I can put myself on mute so we can actually talk some and get to know each other more, or we can um, you know, spend this time to get prepared for next week, but I'll leave it up to you all. No, I'd just say, yeah, it was really, really nice uh, meeting everybody here and uh, looking forward to uh, working together for the next uh, few months or so. All right, awesome. Well, thank you all. Um, by group, hopefully, um, We'll, we'll start to open up a little bit more, but, uh, you know, 
as as I always hear from students is we don't know the questions to ask until we know the questions to ask. Like, you know, there's a lot of things here that, you know, seem straightforward until we go to actually get into it. So again, you know, it seems like most people here are involved in more than one book club or have been more. So there should be some eyes on the Slack channel to get some pretty quick responses, either from us or the mentors. So um, there are no dumb questions. Um, there might just be a, a different chapter that might be more appropriate to talk about that. But again, if it's something immediate, I think that probably takes the higher precedence than just learning something to learn something. But if there's an actual reason or if we need to revisit something more in depth, we can do that. But um, it's nice meeting you all. And thanks for participating in my semi-botched uh, icebreaker attempt there. I'm not very good at this. Again, while I'm kind of working on this is helping to work with my clear clear communication, but um, you know, any feedback, any thoughts um, as we're going through, definitely uh, keep it open. I'm, I'm open to feedback. You may want to check with whoever you're speaking with about feedback, but um, again, uh, you know, any way that we can learn here, but also build on our communication skills, our presentation skills, anything that's also relevant for um, you know, roles working with data or being part of the data is definitely something we can add in on here as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop on the thing, but is there anything else before I do that and we uh, wrap up for the, the day? All right, well, thank you all. It's great meeting you all, and um, we'll talk next week on the 24th. Take care. Thanks also for facilitating. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I appreciate it. See you. See you, everyone.